Hello everyone and welcome to this repair video where we will be looking at this PlayStation 3 which has a common yellow light of death issue and we will be focusing on repairing and replacing the Tolkien capacitors. This particular model is a CECHG03 model as indicated on this particular sticker at the bottom of the unit itself. As we can see the console has never been opened before because the warranty sticker is still intact. So we'll start off by removing the hard drive cover and taking a small Phillips screwdriver remove the blue screw which is holding the actual hard drive bay in place now once the screw has been removed you can actually slide the tab on the hard drive cage backwards and the hard drive should pop out now this particular model did have a 120 gig hard drive fitted even though originally this was a 40 gig hard drive now the next step is to actually start to remove the warranty sticker as, as I initially mentioned this is intact and these particular stickers can be quite difficult to actually remove so finding something slightly sharp or flat to get behind the sticker is going to be under. Once the warranty sticker has been removed, you can begin to remove the plastic or rubber tab that is hiding the security torx bit. Once this rubber piece has been removed, and this will reveal the security torx bit. Now this particular torx bit is a T8 size. With the screw removed, you can now begin to slide off the top cover as shown. With the cover removed, there will be seven Phillips screws around the perimeter of the console. and These can be removed as shown. Something to note, one of the screws is half the size compared to the other six screws and this can be identified in the top right hand corner marked with an S symbol. You can now remove the top cover by carefully lifting it from the back and this will eventually reveal all of the internal components of the PlayStation 3. We can now go ahead and remove the various PlayStation 3 components which will eventually give us access to the motherboard.
The quickest and easiest way to remove these NEC capacitors is by using a pointed pry tool to take off the plastic cover that's covering the capacitors themselves. The reason for not using any kind of heat such as a soldering iron or a hot air gun is because these plastic caps will absorb quite a lot of heat and will prevent the capacitors from easily coming off in the first place so therefore carefully applying a bit of pressure using a pointed pry tool you can slowly take the capacitor off. Now be careful not to dig into the actual board itself try to keep the pry tool as flat as possible Now also repeat this on the second capacitor. You can also carefully remove the odd bits of plastic that has been left behind from the capacitor itself by using some pointed tweezers or if you prefer you could also melt these off with a soldering iron. You can now look at beginning to clean up the contact pads. As you can see here it's quite difficult to get the solder to actually adhere to the contact pads themselves so at this given point it would be very useful to actually use some flux which would aid adhesion. For this repair you are going to need some tantalum D size capacitors. These need to be 6.3 volts and 470 microfarads. These can be purchased through a variety of different online retailers. You can position the capacitor by aligning the positive side of the capacitor, which is indicated by the bold orange line, to the positive rail on the motherboard. Once you are happy that the capacitor is secured to the board, you can now repeat the process for all the remaining seven capacitors. Now that all eight tantalum capacitors have been secured to the board in the correct orientation, you can now begin to clean the area for any remaining flux that may have been potentially used for the soldering process. With the repair now complete, we can also now use this opportunity to also remove and replace the existing thermal paste. Once the majority of the thermal paste has been removed, we can then use some isopropyl alcohol to remove any remaining residue that may be left over. We can also repeat this process on the heatsink. We can now go ahead and apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste to both the GPU and the CPU. In this instance I am using some Arctic MX2 thermal paste. The thermal paste should be thinly applied 
across the entire surface of both the chips. This can be done by using either the applicator provided or by using a credit card. With the thermal paste applied, we can now go ahead and reassemble the PlayStation 3 by following the reverse procedure of the teardown. At this point of the teardown process, I will recommend applying some insulation tape over the newly soldered capacitors. This will limit any chance of any electrical shorts occurring once the motherboard brace has been added back on to the board. And there we go, the PlayStation 3 has now been assembled and we can go ahead and test the console. With the console now connected we can go ahead and turn on the power. And as you can see the green light has remained on, whereas previously the yellow light of death would have appeared and the console would have shut down instantly. You can now go ahead and turn off the PlayStation to check that the console can power back on again without any issue. And as we can see, the console has powered on again for the second time without any issue. And we can now go ahead and test out the console with any games. Now this particular console is jailbroken so there are some games currently installed onto the console itself so we will now go ahead and test out both a PlayStation 3 game and also a PlayStation 2 game.
I hope you enjoyed this repair video and I would appreciate it if you could like and subscribe to the channel for new upcoming content.